Thanks for doing this. Uh, and also, can people give a quick round of applause to Frank? He does so much for us. Our Hong Kong films are mostly his responsibility. Um, so we only have a little bit of time. We didn't know you'd be here. Thank you for doing this. Um, so it's a very unusual movie. Three directors, three main characters, one film. Can you talk about how this project came about? Uh 咁就開始,不如就我哋每一個導演呢,各自去負責每一個策劃呢,去開展一個故事。So, um, the, the project originated with Johnny Toe, the producer. And, um, he wanted three new directors who won one of the film competitions in Hong Kong to do a movie together. And he thought about a topic. The topic was the th you know three most no you know three of the most notorious Hong Kong thieves you know robbers what have you, and the story is based on the rumor that the three of them were rumored to have met together at a restaurant in Guangzhou you know Canton, and so um, Johnny told him thought well why not we have each of the director directed a segment for each of the three bandits so that's how the movie got started. How did you pick Yip Kai Fun? 其實呢就一開始嘅時候呢杜生呢就叫我哋自己去揀究竟邊個做邊一個策劃嘅咁但係因為都因為我之前都幫杜生都寫過好幾套電影咁都大概了解到佢其實所謂嘅畀你揀都
But Johnny then told us, no, 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 this is not the movie, this is not the kind of movie I want to make. You know, this is not the kind of movie I have in mind. Uh, he wanted us to go deeper into the character, the development of the character. So that's why um, once we realized that um, he's going after the characterization, you know, how each of them develop within the story. And, and in other words, the film is not really about the carrying out the actual action, but you know, how their character changes with everything surrounding them. So that's when we started going our own ways um, and started doing, doing our own work separately. It took, us, it took me three and a half years to finish writing the screenplay. And it was much harder than, than I thought it would be. You would think that, well, you know, you have three, because it's three, really, this is not three directors doing three short films, but it's three directors actually doing one big full length feature film. So, and there were many compromises that we need to make. So, including the script writing process, the whole project actually took three and a half years. Uh, quick question, but how many, in three and a half years, how many drafts did Johnny Toe reject? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Um we started writing the script in January of last year. Gumday 咁所以到我係數冇數過，我真係冇數過有幾多個，係啊。So in the early writing process, uh, starting very long, you know, very early with the writing process, Johnny pretty much left us alone. Um, the producer, another famous Milky Way producer, Yao Nai Hoi, was actually the main, you know, our main go-to guy. So he would review and work with us on the script. He gave us many ideas, many opinions, but uh, ultimately he let us make our own decisions. Um, but many times he would say no to a lot of things that we wrote. So he would say no, go back, write again. And uh, in terms of how many drafts we've done for the script, well, we judge it by the number of days, not by number of drafts. So when I look at my files, I, you know, I'm seeing that like maybe a year, it took us a, you know, like we, a year ago, we were still doing the scene. You know, when you write a screenplay, you start with the scene. You, you, you separate the scenes first, then you write the dialogue. So, so uh, when I look back on my files, you know, even like, like f uh, for the first year alone, we're still talking about um, laying out the scenes. So that's why it took so long to um, get the script done. And why set the movie during 1997 and the handover? Uh, so inspired by this uh, uh, the so Dagit,是,沒有那麼多三個KPI,沒有三個KPI,沒有那麼多三個KPI,沒有那麼多三個KPI,沒有那麼多三個KPI,沒有那麼多三個KPI,沒有那麼多三個KPI,沒有那麼
you know, Chinese ro robbery, you know, back in the 80s and early 90s, there were a lot of um, Chinese, um, you know, ro robbers and killers that come down to Hong Kong to rob jewelry stores and banks. But by, by you know, by the end of the, you know, end, end of the decade, there were much less Chinese robbers, mainland, mainland Chinese robbers. Um, as to why I chose 19, you know, we chose 1997 as the year this happened. Well, obviously, 19, 1997 is an iconic time, iconic event in the history of Hong Kong. Um, you know, the whole Chinese community is aware of the time. You know, 19, 1997 at that time kind of signifies the end of a end of an era. You know, end of a time, something you know near you know the end of British rule. So that's why we want to use this. Uh, as a theme, the theme that a certain era, a certain period is ending as the main theme of the film. Uh, Yip Kai Foon is also, Yip Kai Foon and Chung Si Kong, they were friends, right? Early on? They uh, knew each other, right? According to the research, yeah, that's okay. it. <laughs> so so uh, with Yip Kai Foon, what parts are real and what parts did you guys make up? And also, sorry, uh, the footage of him in the street shooting, that's the real footage, isn't it? Um, or is that? No, we. You recreated? Yeah, okay. we created. Uh, I'm not sure. 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 他們的家鄉就不過他就不是做走私 好時代性,大飛走私電視這件事在海面上,一個插班大陸如果見到有些大飛走過,這個也是一個iconic的畫面,我們教導一個時代的背景。so uh, actually, you know, the, Yip, the, the story with Yip Kwai Fun is partially true. You know, our, in, our research showed that he was um, actually in hiding in Guangzhou at that time by the you know, mid-1990s. But, um, but he wasn't doing smuggling. He was, um, he was living in Guangzhou and was working as a bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> but, but our research also showed that he uh, actually came out of retirement by that time. So um, we, we modified our story a bit to, to, show, you know, to show that he's now Smuggling, you know, smuggling electronics. Um, to us, the the, the use, you know, the, the the scene of seeing, you know, smuggling smugglers, you know, smuggling all these goods uh, in the open ocean. To to me, that you know, like for a fee for for a bandit for a robber, seeing smugglers openly smuggling stuff in in you know in the waters of Hong Kong, to me is a very symbolic thing and. And um, that's that's one reason I want to show it. To me, it's a very you know it, it's very symbolic of changing of the times. So my timer went off, which means we're out of time. Oh, <laughs> okay, thank you. But but uh, oh. So can I have one question? I just I, I can't know this answer. Okay. Um, so in the end of the song, some of you Hong Kong people will recognize that song originally sung by the winners, right? Can it be Yang Chai Chui Feng, right? Let you know, let the wind blows or let everything blows like the wind. Why not use the original version? Why use a, a someone? And why have someone re you know, did, did a new version? Uh,咁其实因为本身呢一个系我哋呢个generation嘅导演啦，我哋呢个generation嘅嘅人啦去睇翻嗰个年代嘅策划，咁我哋就用翻一个新嘅，其实无论系个演绎上面都有一个新
you know, it's not, you know, it, it's, it's better to use a new interpretation. So using a new version, you have to have someone else read, you know, sing the song in the new version. And also we decided to use a female singer because this, this film is really full of macho, you know, there's all, all guys, right? There's hardly any female character. So we thought having a female singer singing the song at the end would be a kind of like a balancing act. 